So we're going to be breaking down this um, this notion that um, it has been in my ear for a little bit lately. Thanks for the thumbs up. You guys like when you come on. Give me some hearts. If you can hear and you're in, you're going to stay. Um, so in conversation with lots of different moms over the past few weeks, I just kept hearing this. Um, I just try to keep the peace. I just try to keep the peace. And, uh, and I, 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 um, it's kind of been bouncing around in my head. So I wanted to bring it here and, and really, um, really unpack that for you and with you so that you can be aware of what that really means and of in what ways you might be inadvertently holding yourself back and your relationship back uh, or getting in the way of true peace in your family. And so um, the title of today's training is uh, when, to keep, when to keep the peace or say your peace. How do you know the difference? So how do you know when to keep the peace and when it's time to say your piece. And, you know, the first thing I just really want to highlight is that it's a coping strategy that we use, uh, however, however effective or ineffective. So many people use a coping strategy, um, and this goes way back to family of origin. If I just keep the peace, and we're going to dissect what that means, then... I, um, maybe things will stay okay. Maybe nobody will get hurt. Maybe I won't upset anyone. Hi, Liz, and welcome. Thank you so much for commenting. Thank you so much. Thanks for commenting, Dawn. I'm glad you can hear. Um, you know, we, we tell ourselves that if I could just, um, kind of not rock the boat or if I can just keep the kids quiet enough, or if I can um, keep the noise level um, to, to a, a minimum that won't upset my partner or my spouse. Um, and, and, you know, I wrote in, in an email I sent out this morning. To, if you're on my list, then you've got an email in your inbox. And I'm just naming some of the ways that I hear women say this. Um, it sounds in your head like, well, um, I'll just keep the peace because we tell ourselves we fool ourselves into thinking that um, we're going to avoid conflict by not saying something that we we feel that we need to say by by not naming some truth so it sounds like if i say that it'll things will get worse if i say something about that or if i ask for what i need then it's just going to make everything worse or harder it's going to create conflict so we don't say it um, it's just easier for me to ignore the issue is it, is it easier for you to numb out to the truth of what you're feeling and to tune out what's really going wrong, what's not working? Is it really easier? Ask yourself that. Is it easier for problems to continue and gain momentum? That's what we're saying. Hi, Laura. Hi, Maria. I'm so glad y'all are joining me. Yay. Welcome, friends. And um, we say, I'm afraid that when I, when I try, if I, if I don't keep the peace, so if I try to say my piece, if I say what I feel and what I need, it's all gonna, it's gonna come out wrong. Or it's gonna be misinterpreted or turned against me. Or my partner's gonna use that to start a fight. I'm a, I don't know how to say it without having a fight. So a lot of us fall into this category. If you've been kind of holding your relationship together with bubble gum and band-aids for a long time and communication is not something you really know how to do well and it often does lead to conflict or detachment, distancing, um, resentment, more misunderstanding, that kind of a thing, then you feel scared to start doing things any differently because how could it if it got worse, you'd be in big trouble. If it got worse, then you're you're planning the separation, or you are, um, or you are having conversations that you don't want to be having because you don't want to split up the family. And a lot of the women I speak to are are at that point already. They're scared to think about it, but it is a thought in their head. So, 
So we want to look at what we're doing to perpetuate this, to allow it, to tolerate it, and what we're doing to actually challenge it and change it. Okay, it's all in our power. There's nothing outside of you that is more powerful than what's inside of you. You may need help and support in knowing how to gain the tools and build the muscles um, so that you can take the actions, so you can speak your voice, so you can tell the truth. But the difference between keeping the peace, which is really a, is a coping skill that backfires, okay, it's a coping skill that backfires. There's no such thing as keeping peace that doesn't already exist. If you are in a household where people are walking on eggshells or your kids are scared of you that you're going to yell at them or where your partner and you could come to blows at any moment or where you're yelling, you're boiling over, you're getting to a boiling point. If in general anybody's walking around with a certain level of tension and anxiety kind of brewing uh, or you're at the edge of overwhelm a couple times a week even, then there's it's an illusion to think that and you're better off seeing this. If I didn't believe that, I couldn't say it to all of you today. It's an illusion to think that I'm gonna maintain some peace. What you're maintaining is the status quo, okay? So what you're maintaining when you tiptoe around the truth or when you, when you uh, shut yourself down here and don't speak up about what you need and want, what you're maintaining is whatever level of stress and dysfunction already exists in the family system and there's no judgment or blame when I say that. I got my dysfunction, everybody has their dysfunction. No one is exempt from that. Um, but the goal here is that we, lo we love our lives. We feel like we're living our dreams. We get to soak up the magic of being with our kids. We get to like stare at their faces and just fall in love with them over and over again. We get to be just blown away by the things that they say and the way their minds work and the way they explore the world and their new ideas when they get to be older and um, preteens or teenagers, the stuff they come up with, it's so incredible. We all, we all want that and, and that's within all of our power. To get to be excited to see our partners at the end of the day instead of having to keep peace or walk on eggshells or feel that we have to come in and everything's on us. We better get it all straight and organized. You need to maintain some status quo that doesn't feel good anyway. So ask yourself like, how am I liking this? How it's going? How am I liking this? Maybe you're at the point where you've been thinking about, um, you've been thinking about what's not working and you notice what's not working. Ask yourself, am I liking this? Am I liking how it is now? Or would I like it to be some other way? And let yourself go there. It's important to be able to open up and expand into what you're wanting. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Sarah. So glad you all are joining. Awesome. So, um, so right now, I want you just honest, honest, um, honest divulging <laughs> of, of your truth here. Say in the comments, are you a person who more um, tries to keep the peace? So kind of kind of hesitant, uh, you, you hold in something that's burning here, um, or are you somebody who says your piece um, no matter what? No matter what it comes out like, you say your piece, you call it like it is, uh, maybe that leads to conflict, we'll get there, um, but which side of the fence do you fall on? Are you a say your piece, um, come hell or high water, or are you somebody who is going to uh, sensor, hold in, filter, check your audience, tiptoe around, be more cautious, be more careful. I want to know. So drop it in the chat now. And then we're going to look at what's next, what you can do. So it's important to look at what am I doing? What's working about that? What's not working about that? And then we can, from there, make decisions make empowered decisions about if we need to change something or not. Okay, good. So keep the peace until I get to the point where I have to say, uh, say something and then it comes out badly. Depends on the situation, but mostly say my piece. I go back and forth depending on the situation. Yeah, probably more cautious, cautious and careful. All right, keep weighing in. I love hearing from all of you. Awesome, keep the comments coming. 
when you watch, drop this in. Even if it's the replay, drop it in. I always come back and read the comments and always want to respond to you. I try to say my piece doesn't always come out well until recently. Changed that to tiptoeing around certain people now. That's all I can see. Okay, Laura, I got your comment. All right, um, anybody else here? Tell me if you haven't yet. Are you a keep the peace, hold it in, tiptoe, be cautious, or speak your truth, say your peace, no matter what? All right, drop it in. I keep turning around because my dog's making all these all these noises, so I'm shushing her. Um, all right, so um, some common worries. We worry about um, being misunderstood or not heard, or we we have a sense that nobody is really going to hear us. Like, why say it? Because no one's going to um, be able to hear that or not overreact or maybe things would get unsafe. With my husband, I usually say my piece, but sometimes I wait too long and it spews <laughs> and stings. That's a great distinction. Um, when when we um, when we are kind of doing that dance and trying to play both sides, so sometimes I'll I'll um, in some situations I'll just um, not say what I'll not speak my truth I'll not say my piece and then sometimes it will be strong strong enough that I will no matter what it matters where it's coming from and you're you're highlighting this Liz um where it where it comes from and what's underneath it and driving it so why we say it um is and, and the energy that it comes from is what will inform the outcome that's where your partner's either super reactive or flies off the handle in anger, or whether what you say really lands. And so what's the motivation? What energy is it coming from when we say our peace or say our truth? Um, what I know a lot of women do is, well, it's safer not to say anything. It's just easy. We, and I hear this all the time from strong women. It's just easier. It's easier to just do it or, or um, to ignore it. But I, I really want to hold up a mirror today, and that's why I came on. I want to hold up a mirror to say, is that getting you the results you want? Is ignoring, avoiding, brushing under the rug, venting to friends, and not speaking your truth to your kids or to your partner from a place of love, confidence, clarity, connection, is it getting you the results you want? Because if it's not creating peace, true peace, and what I mean, oh, I think I just lost some sound. What I mean when I say true peace, let me know if you can still hear me, is that you feel relaxed at home. That you feel, I'm gonna switch ear, ear things real quick. I think one side, can you hear me now? Give me a thumbs up. Tell me if you can hear me. I hope this works. Oh, can you hear now? Still? Okay. All right. Thank you. I had to switch. One of them died. Um, where was I? Um, true peace. What it feels like is I am relaxed in my home. I'm relaxed in my body. I like being here. This is my sanctuary. I love time with my kids. And... I love time away from them. I love nurturing me. It feels damn good to take space for me and not worry about them. Not worry about them. I don't take them with me. I don't feel guilty about not having them with me. And this is true since my kids were babies. But I know my clients feel this way now too. It's like we have to get right within ourselves and get right in our own skin. And we have to create that relationship with ourselves in order to be free of guilt, in order to worry about how everyone else feels all the time. We have to learn how to care for ourselves. So um, when, we, when, we, uh, when we tell ourselves, I'll just keep the peace, it's safer to do this, what's really happening is we are deciding to stifle what we feel because we've assessed it's not safe 
or some, the risk is too big and we're not willing to take it. And if that's where you are, then um, it has to be okay. You have to accept that before you can move into something else. It has to be okay. It's just the way it is. And do you like it? Do you want things to stay in that kind of status quo? And it's totally your decision and it's totally within your right to like something or not like it, to feel respected or not, to have the level of support and help that you want and, um, or not, and to own it either way, own it, own it all, own all of it, decide that you're creating this. So you get to own it. Um, the longer that we stay in not saying, uh, not, you know, just calling this like telling the truth. So let's break down saying your piece for a second. Saying your piece could mean, in its clearest sense, what I mean when I say that is telling the truth. So naming the truth. In its most twisted sense, saying your piece is venting, blaming, judging, accusing, attacking. That's not what I mean by saying your piece. That's all negativity. That's all negative junk. That's just low that's anger. That's not coming from love. Truly saying your piece is telling the truth, caring more about speaking the truth than you do about whether it might hurt someone else's feelings to hear the truth or not. All right. Um, so I know that um, from, from experience, my own life and working with, with so many moms, that when we, when we don't tell the truth that we know and that we feel, um, it, it actually perpetuates and intensifies anxiety and stress. So what women think they're doing to keep peace is actually causing anxiety. It's intensifying relationship, uh, strife, conflict, tension. It's upping the ante. It's upping the stakes of every conversation, every communication. It's increasing the number of eggshells on the floor to walk on for your kids and for your partner. I want to be so clear about this so that you don't, you're not doing something that is actually harmful to you. What happens when, when we are in this cycle of I'll just avoid and not name the truth is I'm going to yell at my kids more. I'm going to be losing it more. I'm going to be angry more. Um, I cannot enjoy family time. I have no access to that. I don't even know what that would feel like in my body. I feel totally overwhelmed waking up to know we're all going to spend the day together. That's how it feels. It feels miserable. That's so painful. I could cry right now just connecting with that feeling. It's so sad. It's so sad to feel that we're not in charge of and not in control of our own, our own life. That I'm just kind of a victim of my circumstance. My kids are tantruming and I hate my life. That's how it feels when you're not in charge. Um, the, we develop illness. The body develops illness and disease. So many clients have come to me after they've developed autoimmune disease. And the process of, of um, coming into ownership of all of the layers of their being includes healing physically. Healing on a physical level dropping down in medications, cutting out the wine, whatever you're using to numb out, to survive and to cope. You don't really need any of those things. You don't need dependency on any of that stuff that you're, any of the things you're using in place of being in charge of your own inner experience, your thoughts and your feelings. So um, if you find yourself avoiding things that you once enjoyed, like life is small, scary to go out, you have social anxiety, you have catastrophic thinking, fears about what's going to happen to you or your kids. So life is small. So you isolate yourself. Um, also relationships, especially partnerships, just become transactional. You know, there's no, there's no passion. There's no joy. There's no desire to connect, to laugh, to share about your day, to help each other through the tough times. Um, that, that piece will just turn into an exchange, a transactional exchange. We need each other for money, for time, for kid coverage. That's it. Those are just, we're just going to exchange on those levels and ignore the rest to keep the peace. Right? So my, my teaching today is, um, to be honest, you know, if there's one thing I could say and where does that start? 
It's be honest with you. So when I asked you in the beginning, are you, are you more aligned with, are you more likely to keep the peace and be quiet or to say your peace? And, and I want you to be um, just so truthful about that. Think about why you ever, if you ever do, not say what you feel strongly about. And you're going to find all kinds of things when you go looking. Well, I doubt that it's important enough. I'm not sure that anyone could hear me. I feel like, well, it would just start an argument. I'm afraid of consequences. Um, I don't know if I really, if I'm right to believe it, if I'm allowed to have my own opinion. I don't know if I'm too much for people. There are all these thoughts that swarm around for us in our heads that come from our parenting we received. And it's, it's like not true or untrue or right or wrong. It's stuff we carry with us that creates our reality. We don't need to judge it. We just need to decide if we want to live with it or change it. It's really that simple. So be honest with yourself first. Do I like this? Do I want to stay where I am? Is this working for me what I'm doing? Or am I tired of going silent? Am I tired of tiptoeing or not saying what I want to say? Am I tired of, on the flip side, being so honest and saying my piece, but from a place of anger, from a place of resentment, from needing to make demands, trying to fight for my, for my support, trying to fight for, um, for equal footing from a place of inequality, from a place of feeling diminished, from a place of not really believing that I'm worthy of that, that I get to feel good, that I get to feel as good or way better than uh, than my spouse or my partner. It's all okay. When one person receives healing, everybody in the family receives healing and benefits. I've never heard any parents, any, any, any co- co-parents, any partners, or any kids. I've never heard of any of them complaining or feeling cheated. When moms got healthy, strong, confident, and happy. When moms overcame anxiety. That is a benefit to everyone. Everyone gets the benefit of that. When we're honest with ourselves, when we fully own how we feel, and then we can share that as needed with others to speak the truth and name the truth without having to hold back, without apologizing, without, um, without needing to argue about anything. It is just the truth. It's inarguable. It's how you feel. It's nothing to argue with, right? It's how you see things. It's what you believe. Um, that holds its own weight and that holds its own weight. So, um, I remember I used to work with someone, I had a colleague who we were sharing about partner stuff and ha- both having young kids who didn't sleep uh, more than two hours a stretch for multiple years. And we used to exchange stories about this. And she used to say, Oh, uh, when, when something, when, when my husband does something that, that gets to me, I have to, I have to hash it out. It just burns right here until I say it. (laughs) And I love, I love the way she described that. It just burns a hole in my throat, she would say, until I can get it out. And I do speak to a lot of women on the phone who are strong, uh, who, who are strong, who have strong personalities, who are fiery, um, and, and who are, who know they can go off, you know, who know they can tend to, um, to just kind of let it rip. If they were to open their mouths, like the floodgate is going to come out. And, uh, and that resonates for me as well. And I know that, that, uh, we can't have that kind of respect and, um, calm and connection and peace in our families. If it doesn't exist in our hearts, if we don't have it for ourselves and, So you can say your piece all day long, but if it's coming from a place of, um, I need you to know and understand, and I need to explain to you and justify and prove why I'm right, it will fall on deaf ears forever. It will lead to all the bad things that you don't want. And I think that's what we're afraid of. But there's another way. It's just such a better path. You don't have to fight for uh, what you want to fight about what you feel and what you want. There's no need to justify it. It doesn't require justification. It's how you feel. It's what you want. It's what you have to say. So speak your truth. Say what's true. And 
you know, this is not my, my um, first day. <laughs> this isn't my first day in motherhood or um, in this job, in this role. And I know all the things that happen for people. If you were to take this advice today and try to put it into practice, maybe you'll get some good results. Maybe you'll get some surprising results. Maybe you'll say your piece and then your partner will totally spin out or overreact in anger. And, you know, I want to say, like, stay safe. Do what you know to create safety for yourself. But also tiptoeing around the truth is not creating real safety for anyone, not for you or for your kids. And so if what you're wanting is to learn how to actually own your truth, how you feel, how to bring that into your family, how to set that example for your children, uh, to, to have that confidence in who you are as a mom, uh, in, in what you believe, how to trust yourself to guide your family, how to trust yourself to parent your kids in a way that is really going to um, bring out the best in them. So not futz around in power struggles and threats and um, and reading a thousand books for interventions that don't work with your particular child. The antidote to all of that is trusting yourself, being honest with you, feeling what you feel and trusting yourself. So if you're looking for um, some missing piece and you haven't found it yet, I invite you and encourage you to take that time for you. I'm so happy to be here for you. Get, let's get on the phone and, and we'll have a chat about what's keeping you stuck, what's getting in your way. And we'll see if I can help you to get some clarity about that. And, uh, and for those of you that do feel ready to go off and running and putting this into practice, I want to hear, I want to hear about it. So come back into the comments and really share your experience. Um, share, share, you know, I'd love for those of you who feel so bold, um, to share, what might stop you from naming your truth? So really looking at what are those kind of invisible things that are stopping us in our tracks that are deterring us from telling the truth or seeing the truth for ourselves and for others. Um, we'd love to know what that is. And then for those of you who, who do speak your piece and have success with that, share, share your wins, share what works for you share and encourage others in that it is possible and share your wins and share your celebrations here. That's what we're here for. So lots of love to all of you. Tell me, um, give me a thumbs up or a like or drop a comment in um, if there was, just let me know what you thought about this talk today. If there's anything that stood out to you or a question that you have. And I'm running to another call, but I wanna give you lots of love and I'll check back and circle back and answer comments. All right, see you soon.